This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV in association with Macklin's Gym Marbella. We're in Berlin for Smith vs Abraham 2. With me, not fighting this weekend, George Groves. How are you, George? I'm very well, thank you. Yeah? Yeah. What did you make of the weigh-in today? Yeah, it was good. The weigh-in was lively. Um, they love a shopping centre weigh-in out here. It's a, it's a must-have. Uh, everyone weighed in well. There was plenty of Brits out. Uh, Lots of Josh Warrington fans out, Leeds fans. Uh, they're enjoying themselves. Um, it was good. Interesting. I wonder what the atmosphere is going to be like there tomorrow. I think he sold about 400 tickets, so it should be quite interesting. Yeah, good on him. Like a uh, popular lad. Ain't much to do in Leeds these days, I'm, I'm sure. And uh, they're all out here uh, enjoying themselves in Germany. So. Uh, I wish their the lad well, hope, hope he boxes well, I'm sure he will, and um, yeah, hopefully a few of them get home in one piece, don't get rested, don't get bashed up, because uh, you know, it's touch and go the way they're behaving at the moment, but it's uh, it's all good fun for a lot of them, I'm sure, and uh, hopefully they uh, can't get together. Let's see if they do, let's hope they do. Right, let's jump straight into it. Just um, interviewed Eddie Hearn about an hour ago. And uh, just at the end of the interview, I mentioned that I was going to come and interview you. And uh, his words to me were, could you ask George to stop being horrible to me? That's what he said. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know I was being horrible to him. Like, uh, I said two, two, two uh, social media pieces from my Swart Lobster account. Uh, stop waffling, stop telling lies about me. Uh, f first one would work, didn't. Carried on telling lies, telling deeper lies. So, uh, yeah, just uh, politely, in my, in my own words, asked him to stop, uh, you know, discrediting me, uh, misleading the general public about my situation, about the boxing situation, about many other things. Uh, and then he stops doing that, I don't really know where else to stand, you know. So, uh, would never in a million years go out and try and attack or upset Eddie. It does seem to be, from an outsider's perspective, a, a dislike from you towards Eddie Hearn. That's just a perception. Is that, is that a correct perception? Hey, I have nothing against Eddie Hearn. Nothing against him. I've boxed on his shows before. Uh, you know, I've worked with a man before. Uh, as I say... All I said was, you know, in, in, in the recent weeks is, if you want me to make if you want me to fight James Egal and make me a, uh, a sensible offer uh, or get your dad to call me and make you an offer because you know people feel I was, I was having a dig but no whenever there is business to be done Sounded Barry, like a dig though didn't it whenever 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 I've had an offer from Matrim it's come via Barry Hearn you know and uh, Eddie and Calla are very close and you know, by all accounts they, they you know they put shows on together in certain ways you know, borrow from one to pay the other and etc etc that's Pretty much how we're here now. You got a matchroom fighter fighting, uh, you know, over in Germany. I'm sure, vice versa, it'll be the same down the line, maybe in the UK. But uh, yeah, so all the negotiations, uh, the serious negotiations, were done, you know, with Barry. And I said, if, if Eddie wants to call me up and make me an offer for the for the Degal fight, you can or get Daddy to. Um, obviously, as boxing fans, we understand your WBC mandatory situation to a degree um, but I think I speak for most of the boxing fans when I say that we want to see DeGale Groves too um, at some point um, was this fight ever offered to you for April the 25th? Yeah it's been offered to me for April 25th that's, that's all that's been offered to me uh, firstly like Eddie's trying to well he patronises me from time to time he makes it like I'm not aware I am very aware of the situation it's certainly anything to do with myself I make myself aware and pretty much of the time it doesn't take too much brains to work out what's going on uh, we had a strong inkling that uh, Darrell would be uh, granted a voluntary defence of his WBC let's be honest you know uh, he's champion so that gives him a certain amount of respect and power uh He's being looked after by a chap called Al Heyman, who's a very influential person in America. Uh, looks after the likes of Floyd Mayweather, a WBC champion, uh, or 
Wilder, the WBC champion. I, I can't think of him now, but he's got plenty of plenty of dealings with the WBC, so he has a very good relationship with them. And um, we had uh, you know a strong case we felt for an immediate fight with with Darrell, but we knew that it was fifty fifty, and it could go against us, especially with this guy being the champion. It wouldn't be the end of the world if we had to wait a little bit longer for that fight. Um, in the meantime, there's a few things that we just want, you know, tidied up, uh, and we we are 100% sure that we will get that. Uh, so, fighting James Agal would be walking away from an opportunity to fight for WBC, to fight for the IBF. Uh, Eddie says that it must be a 50-50 split because, well, his only reasoning is that that's what it would be in an IBF purse bid situation but we both know if it's not going to be a purse bid then you don't have to adhere to the splits uh, we didn't adhere to the splits when I boxed Carl Farachi in either of my fights uh, in fact the splits were far greater in my favour than they were in a purse bid situation so likewise if I'm going to box James DeGale you know you look at it uh, what does James DeGale bring to the table what do I bring to the table what James DeGale brings to the table Matram Matram at the moment have a lot of sky dates. Uh, they have momentum. Eddie is perceived as the man who puts on big shows. Uh, he's talking about the previous performances. Well, my two previous performances. Uh, I don't think I've lost a round. I boxed very well. I won the European title. Won the WBC silver belt. Uh, I the fight uh, in Liverpool in, in November against Dennis Duglin. Uh, Dennis Douglas showed up in shape to win. I boxed well, you know. I was harsh on myself at the time because I'm that sort of person. I will do that, and maybe from now on, I won't be so honest in in the public because uh, it can come back to bite you. So, you know, I watched that fight back. Hey, I boxed a hell of a lot better than uh, than I thought I did on the night. Uh, I got the guy out there. I stopped him. Likewise, on the flip side, you look at James DeGaulle's recent performances. He's boxed well, but he hasn't had much in front of him. You know, uh, Gonz Gonzalez, I think it was. He, he won on my undercard. Uh, boxed well, stopped a little bit premature, uh, but fair play to DeGaulle. You wouldn't hold it against him. Paraban, which now is now singing him again into uh, stardom on the back of a man who showed up overweight out of shape no trainer no interest in fighting and Howard Foster fantastic referee is stopped the fight before he had even looked in the man's eyes before the man even had a chance to stand up this is a tough Mexican who's never been stopped before in his life he might have been dropped once before in his whole career and he's boxed at a higher level so that was a bit shocking so now Eddie's now relying on the perceived devastating performances from James Segal which were two premature stoppages and my terrible performances, when you go back and you look at who's informed the general public that I had Cole Froch, uh as a pundit for my first fight, I think. I think he might have been there for the second one. So, you know, he doesn't speak that well of me. Uh, sometimes I am I'm now announced as the guy who love him or hate him. He creates a, a stir. Uh, so no one said that before I lost so now because I've lost I'm a, I'm a loving or hating kind of character uh, just because I'll write tweets saying Eddie I am not your whore so you want me to fight James Gal? I'll fight James Gal. no problem will I fight him at the O2 why on earth would I want to fight him at the O2 on a 50-50 split a man I've already beaten and I sold 80,000 tickets at Wembley last year and of course it was a big fight and Frost was world champion but Frost went into hiding for that fight. I forced that fight. I went all the way to America and, and secured that fight. I negotiated that fight. And I was there for every moment of it. And whether people want to admit it or not, whether Eddie wants to admit it or not, I was the greatest promoter there was last year. You know, I sold that fight. Uh, maybe it's arrogance, maybe whatever. But it was time and a place. And I had an audience and, and, I, and I performed for them. I didn't, didn't, uh, didn't get the result on the night. Uh, but... You can't have it all your own way. That's fine. So, off the basis of, of this current situation where James DeGaulle is worthless without me, uh, and he is now in a fight, that is a very, very difficult fight. That we are being told that he's going to make history. He's going to fight the O2 on pay per view, and that he's signed this done deal and it's over the line, and Darrell's on his way over here, and he's going to get beat. 
I don't know. You know, if it, if it five five dig out, is it bigger than an O2 arena? I think so. I think it's a stadium fight. I think it's not Wembley, not yet. Maybe it will be one day. Maybe it will never be, but it's certainly bigger than the O2 because we box and pretty much sold out the O2 four years ago uh, for a British title fight. And we've both come on a long way from there. Profiles have both come along. Boxing itself has come a long way since then. Um, Eddie Hearn is. He's, he's a lucky man. He's gifted with pay-per-view dates, but he can book venues. But he doesn't know how to make fights yet. You know, he's, he's been lucky making fights. He, I'm not his fighter, so maybe he needs to look at alternative routes. If he can't secure me in a fight, or if he wants me, if, if I'm that valuable to him, then he needs to make me an offer. I can't refuse. He needs to make me a sensible offer. As of yet, he hasn't. So, for those reasons you've just mentioned, there, you perceive that the split should be. What, heavily in your favour or slightly in your favour? I don't need to have a, a public negotiation, to be honest. You know, that's not that's how uh, you know things don't you know. Boxing was never created this way. It's never operated this way. Um, w the splits for 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 me and Frotch were confidential. They weren't what people, or they weren't what people thought they were. Eddie wanted me to sign a confidentiality clause for it. He needs to man up and have a real conversation with Degal, his fighter, if he is his fighter, and say to him, "Look, I've promised you 50-50, but it's not 50-50 fight," and make um, and and figure out what will get it over the line. Uh, he needs to probably have an honest conversation with his bosses at Sky and say, "I've promised you Groves Degal for this date, but I shouldn't have because Groves isn't my fighter and." and you know, I wasn't even close to getting that fight made. I've, you know, I've, I've, I've this is a check mark. I can't cash it. So, uh, you know, he needs, he needs, he needs to go away, have a rethink, work it out. If he wants to make that fight, or if he wants to make a fight, he needs to make it sensible. And uh, for now, right now, I'm going to be fighting for WBC in the very near future. I had a busy year last year. I'm not in no rush to do anything. Um, I'm happy to wait my turn if need be. We know. Uh, we'll get our chance you know we know the fighter we, we know pretty much the date we just want to have that signed and sealed and stamped down um, I have every faith in Sal and Brothers they've got me into a fantastic situation in a very short amount of time and uh, I don't need to then run away from that to take short change fighting a man I've already beaten in an arena I've already boxed in uh, just to suit everyone else's needs did you not once say that you want to win a world title and you'll do the quickest and easiest route to that? No, I said I'd rather take I'll take the quickest rather than the easiest route. So quickest route, yeah, sure. But um is it the easiest? Like Which no. one's a harder fight out of the girl and Anthony Dorel? Well they're both tough fights. So both. Uh you'd say Darrell, uh, Darrell, probably not quite as good as Degal, but seeing as I know Degal beaten twice already, I'll say Darrell was a tough fight for me. Um, d don't get me wrong, I have no qualms about fighting James Degal, but the fact of the matter is, since I've been 16, people are telling me that's a stadium fight. You know, one day you two are gonna fight for a world title, or you defend your world title, unify, whatever. It's gonna be a massive, massive fight. When I beat James Degal, if I beat him on April 20, 25th, whenever the date is. Is there going to be another fight? Of course there isn't. Do people want to see me beat for a fourth time? I don't think so. So, you know, first of all, if you're going to look at it like that, I don't need to cash out now. I don't want to cash out now. I want to, there's plenty more things I want to go out and do with myself. Uh, if that, if they said, listen, we won't do it in April, we do it in June and it will be outdoors, we would do it at Stanford Bridge, we'll do it. Something, there's something that was a bit more appealing to me right now. Or even if they just want to concede and talk sense. But so far, it's 50-50. Why? Because I said so. Okay. <laughs> I'm not skint. I earned a lot of money last year. Do you know what I mean? Degal doesn't earn any money. When he wants, when he wants to be sensible, then, um, then you know, we'll make the fight happen. So 50-50 is the, for a vacant title, is the IBF split. And you said about when you fought Carl Froch both times, obviously it was a different situation because he was champion and you was the mandatory challenger so are they not different situations 
between a 50-50 split for a vacant title and you negotiating twice with Froch for a mandatory versus champion purse? If you're not going to go to a purse with situation, then you agree terms with each other. Uh, it makes life a lot easier, of course, because the promoter knows where he stands. He can you know, find a suitable venue, suitable TV date, start pushing it, start pumping it, start selling tickets. If it goes to a purse with things you can drag out, you know, uh, once the purse is won, you know, it's, you have to find, then find a venue. It, this, this process can take time. And because of that, usually the promoter will have to pay slightly more of the odds for the away fighter to secure home advantage for his fighter. Very much at this moment in time, James DeGal is his home fighter. So I would never expect to do that on a 50-50 now anyway. Plus, I'm not even sure what the IBF split are, to be honest, because I haven't read the rule book recently. If I'm ranked number four and he's ranked number one, is that a 50-50 fight? You know, is he... I know you're on a higher percentage on a personal situation if you're challenging the champion if you're in a rank one or two space than if you're ranked below, because I was ranked outside the one and two when I was mandatory, and I wasn't... The, the perceived uh, percentage is 15% rather than 20 So, you know it's all up for negotiation as I say uh, it's trying to make me out like I'm running from a fight or I'm scared or I'm not interested or I'm being greedy it's not the case it's the case is that I've got plenty of options here it's not like my world title shot is out of reach it's, 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 uh, it's, it can never happen I'm mandatory for the WBC I can go to the States and box and be exposed on a you know a bigger platform At the moment, I've been involved in big fights. When I fight, people people want to come and watch me box. You know, maybe that won't last forever, but at this moment in time, that is the case. You know, if you, when I boxed for Brass last year, I had great viewing figures on Sky, best viewing figures I've had in years. Um, sold out Wembley Arena. You know, it's. I'm, I'm, you know, if you compare that to what James DeGaulle has achieved, you know, he's he's struggling to sell out, you know, Blue Water Car Park or whenever it was when he was boxing. So he's he's different, you know. When we when we box each other, of course, it'll be a big fight. But uh, right now, it's just a fight that well, many fights, you know. The fight, if you hold a, a WBC title, James DeGaulle holds an IBF title, is undoubtedly much bigger than it is now but a lot has to happen for that situation to arise you've both got tough mandatory fights to come through for a start and then I suppose looking at it from the outside we think if they can't negotiate in this sort of situation how difficult will it be to negotiate in that situation when you're both champions and it, it, would it be more difficult to, to negotiate a deal to do this fight then? No, I don't think so I think... Um Eddie's trying to make out that it's, it's egos that are getting in the way of this and, you know, coming down to what, what people deserve to be paid in splits. It's like, would that fight interest me if James DeGaulle had a world title? Yeah, of course, it would interest me much more than me doing Eddie Hearn a favour by boxing on his pay-per-view date because no one got no one else there to box. He's got a, he's got, he's got a, a handful of super middleweights uh, all currently boxing. But he ain't interested in matching any of them against each other. They want to fight me, you know. Or he wants them to fight me, because I don't know. What, why is that? Why is that? So, if I if I win WBC and uh, he wins the IBF, then of course we, we can have a unification fight, and it will be huge. And you can wait for the right time for it. You can wait for the right split for it. You can do it however way you want to do it. But right now, I'm not arguing about the split necessarily. I'm not arguing about fighting James Degal. I'm just saying that the whole situation doesn't work for me. I don't need to fight James Egal on that date at the O2 just to fill Eddie's obligation to Sky because he promised them that fight and he promised him a pay-per-view card, you know. Um, how interesting is James Egal versus Andre, Andre Durrell? How, how interesting is it? Is, is You know, will it be pay-per-view? Will it not? That they're, they're, they're ironed on with that date. Will it sell out the O2? Will it not? How much will the undercard cost? You know, he's already promised. Uh, you asked him the question. So how do you, how do you dis discard uh, Darrell and the number three? 
He said, no, it's not disregard. We pay him step aside money and promise him an immediate re uh, pre uh, immediate fight straight after. Well, are you negotiating for me then? Because if I'm on a 50-50 split, don't I have a say in how much you want to pay Darrell to step aside? Don't I have a say in when I fight Darrell after? Uh, so, again, he needs to understand that, uh, you know, he's got his world and his situation and he can control everything in there, but that's not that's not me. I'm not I'm not a maximum fighter. I'm not part of his little clique. And uh, I'm happy to do things a, a tiny bit different. Roll the dice, gamble a bit. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. Um, but I'm no one's whore and uh, I don't need to jump in and uh, make shit happen for other people if it doesn't suit me so when things start working in my favour uh, then I'll start moving um, Have you been slightly frustrated with that WB situation? We saw Kevin Mitchell uh, win the same title you won the silver title and Jorge Linares, the champion, was ordered to fight him so soon after him being, well, winning that fight the other day. It was announced a couple of days ago. The same organisation, but you're having to sort of wait a longer period. Does that frustrate you? Uh, you know, uh, I always like to have a fight in mind. I always like to have a date to work towards. For the first time in my career, I'm actually enjoying a little bit of time where things will just pan out for themselves really you know we, we, we're applying the right pressure with I feel we're saying the right things you know the WBC are, are saying the right things they've granted Darrell the voluntary um, all they've done is extend the date which is frustrating you know they always spoke about him having a voluntary but we was under the impression it was going to be last year not this year um, they've asked for an extension on that and they've got it at the end of the day Darrell is champion you know um I'm sure he had valid reasons for it and uh, and they've got it but you know, they haven't turned around to me and said oh by the way you're not fighting for WC no more you know they're saying you have to wait a little bit longer um, you know frustrating thing is if you know, the goalposts continue to keep moving but um, as I say Sal and Brothers are very good at what they do we will make sure that uh, you know the situation is in hand that it's sorted and yeah you know you want to fight for a world title, of course. Uh, you want to do it in a time frame that works for you. You know, um, you don't want to be in a mandatory position and just keep having fights for the sake of it, waiting for your world title shot. But at the same time, uh, patience is a virtue. And uh, now and again, in boxing, certainly, you have to be patient. Uh, your business plan doesn't always go exactly the way you want it. Um, but as I say you know I'm, I had a busy year last year I'm happy to wait a little bit longer for this one if need be uh, it's the fight I want uh, it's the belt I want um, it seemed it seem like a, a, a silly idea to walk away from it right now and uh, I'm very confident that you know sooner rather than later Darrell gets his voluntary uh, but we'll, uh, we'll be challenging for it soon I assume that you will fight before you have your mandatory against Darrell yeah, possibly. We're looking at dates. I'm speaking to the guys here. We're looking at dates. Maybe uh, a show, end of April, beginning of May. Uh, it's interesting, you know, boxing keeps getting shaken up. You know, we just had the Premiership Football Rights announced. Sky, congratulations. Of, uh, you know, that they'll be over the moon and they've won that. But now they've, they've spent an awful lot of money on it. So uh, they've now got to sustain the company. They've got to find a way to, to pay for those Premiership Football Rights. All us boxers are thinking, man, I wish we could play football, you know. But uh, boxing is a is is a great sport. It's it's not a niche sport. It's a sport that has a a massive hardcore fan base, but also is a uh, fans uh, casual sports fans. Um, it gets good numbers, big hits, and it makes a lot of money for for the TV networks now. So uh, it will be interesting to see all the chops and changes. It's great that you know. Um, next weekend, Carl Frampton's boxing on ITV. I think that's fantastic news. Um, we've got Golovkin tomorrow night against Murray on uh, Channel 5. We've got Sky always doing wonderful things. Um, Box Nation and, and sooner or later BT as well. So um, boxing's interesting. Boxing's on, on its way up. Uh, 
maybe there'll be a fight before, maybe not, but um, it'll be nice to box again, as I say, end of April, early May. See what's out there. Would be a bad idea to go to the States. Maybe call out Andre Durrell or something. Or maybe call out Andre Ward. Who knows? Uh, pick on someone. That's what I'm, I'm famous for. Um, but we're uh as I say, I like keeping busy, I like boxing, I like having something to work towards. But for the first time, I'm, I'm not anxious about it. I'm going to rush, enjoy my, enjoy my training. And I think what will be, will be. As long as we don't leave any stone unturned, we'll uh, kick in all the doors, we'll turn all the stones over, we'll, uh, we'll make things happen and then the right fight will present itself. Right now, there's a firm plan A and that's uh, the WBC. There's a very uh, attractive plan B, which is, uh, you know, uh, James Gale, but there's plenty of other options out there too. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for this insight. Um, nice. Good to get your side of things as well. Obviously, constantly talk to Eddie and about this situation and not really have your side of it, so, you know. It's all right, you know, it, it must be frustrating for Eddie because he's usually he's having his own way and you know everything's peachy uh, most of the time. But it's just not for me this one, you know. Like uh, and the frustrating thing, thing, the frustrating thing for him must be that uh, yeah, he says he, he doesn't understand. Well, you're giving away too much there, Eddie. You know, don't 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 give away too much. To, you know, I know you're trying to tell it as it is and. Don't double bluff yourself. The more time he spends as a promoter, the more like a promoter he's going to have to become. And uh, you can't contradict yourself and uh, and hold it against yourself because um, what he does extremely well is he has uh, people on side, you know, and and, I, and that's something I credit him for. That's something I admire in him. You know, he has a public's opinion. Um, obviously, with the uh, with the help of you know Sky Sky Sports that uh, you know back in 100% he is now perceived as the go-to guy for everyone in boxing but um, if the situation isn't right for me then uh, then it isn't but uh, no no qualm with Eddie you know uh, many dealings with him he's a nice enough chap uh, I wish him wish him very well he's got he's got a pay-per-view date he's, uh, he's a very very lucky man in boxing you know he's got a pay-per-view date He's just working on that pay-per-view fight to fill it. So, uh, in the meantime, I'm sure he's learning quick. All right, George. This has been uh, one of the longest interviews we've ever done, so romantic, appreciate it? your time. It's like a brothel in here. This just this little bit here. I was going to say, what do you mean like? I thought this was. What did you invite me here for? No, this is over there. It looks normal, but in this little corner, it looks like, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, George Graves. Thanks for talking to IFL TV, and uh, obviously we await news of your next fight, WBC, WBC situation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, keep us posted. Yeah, we'll do. Yeah, I'm sure you'll know before me. I'm sure Eddie will tell you before I know. I'm out of the loop on all this shit. I'll just follow Twitter. Are you on Twitter? I'm on Twitter. Oh, uh-huh, cool. Cool. I'm on Twitter too. And Sport Lobster. Mainly Sport Lobster. Sport Lobster is good. Just check it out, you know. Click on it. It's, 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 it's the go-to place for sports fans. I know you're on it. You're on it a lot. Yeah. It's good. Honestly, you like it. I'm on it. Cool. Um, oh, just quickly, obviously, Paul Smith and Martin Murray. I did one day, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, this is really more about you, but obviously, two world title possibilities um, one in Monte Carlo Murray Golovkin and obviously Paul Smith here in Berlin against uh, Arthur Abraham uh, what chance do you give each fire? So the weigh in today both looked in better shape you know um, uh, Smith looked in really good shape his face looked you know, lean and cut and uh, his body was in good shape Abraham looked in better shape um it's hard, it's hard, because you think you've seen the first fight, so you shouldn't be much of the same, but I don't think it'd be anything like the same. Uh, I think Paul's got it all to do, and you know, not necessarily because uh, he's boxing in Germany. Uh, Arthur's uh, 
a great champion. He's been around a long time. He's boxed at a high level a long time. Um, I think maybe he took the first fight a little bit too lightly. Bits and pieces that I heard in the build-up to that fight was that he was taking it too lightly. Um, he didn't look didn't look right on the night. He was taking you know, so much time off him, you know, between rounds, during rounds. Um, same time, say Smith's in good nick, and uh, he says uh, he says he's. You know, there's a difference now between believing and knowing. You know, he's been in there, he's experienced it firsthand, and he's gonna have that confidence to go in there and do a job. Um, I think uh, if I was Smith, I'd look to try and jump on him early. Uh, Abraham's been notorious for starting slow, so uh, jump on him early. I think Stieglitz done that in one fight. Magda Berg a few years ago ended up sort of rushing him and. The fight got stopped on a on a bad eye, which was, was really bad. But even then, Stieglitz set about his intentions from the first bell. I think that would be what I'd like to see from Paul. I'd like to see him um, take authority, take take the take the centre of the ring, uh, drive Abraham back. He worked the body well last time. Let's see more of that. And um, Abraham's a tough man to stop. You know, he's strong. I think he was very accurate in the first fight. I was talking about that earlier. Um, if he's a little bit more busy, it'll be a totally different fight. But uh, you'd have to go with, with Abrams as being being the head, the, the favourite. But um, certainly won't rule out Paul's chance. Wish him well. Hope and, he... and Martin Murray. Yeah, yeah sorry, Mar Martin Murray. Uh, again, got it all to do fighting Golovkin. Golovkin's been in phenomenal form lately. You know, obviously, I've sparred him. Um, great fighter. He's got uh, uh, so much to offer. But um, I think Murray's a, you know, a wily character. He's a, he's a right, being the professional outfit that I am, the card was full. Didn't anticipate talking to you for a day. So um, I will just wrap this up. I don't know where it cut off, actually. I think you were talking about the heavyweight scene. Yeah, so. this is, uh, it's the weekend's over now. We're going home. The fights were great. Um, we, we missed them, but we didn't say we were chatting away. Um, and, uh, yeah, see you again next week. This is Coogan Cassius with George Groves for IFL TV. Thank you very much for watching Daylong Special. <laughs>